Hey, it's Craig Syracuse and welcome to another episode of Walk in Faith, the show where we go beyond the image and we discover who our guests really are. You might know them from TV, the big screen, or even the world of sports, but do we really know who they are as a person? Do we know what motivates them? Do we know what inspires them? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Joining me today are the stars of Creed II, as well as its director, Stephen Cappell Jr. If we don't do what we love, then we wouldn't exist. It's time, kid. It's like nothing really matters to him right now, including me. You gotta think real hard about this. Do you got people that need you now? I'm taking the fight. Victor Drago, son of Ivan Drago, who infamously killed Apollo Creed, appeared today to issue a challenge to Adonis Creed. Don't do this. I ain't got a choice. That's the same thing your father said, and he died right here in my hands. This here is all about my wife, my kids, the life that I live through the night. I was his, it was right when I did my ups and downs, my slips, my falls, my trials and tribulations, my heart, my balls. This won't be the end of me. Or you. It can't be, because we're a team. And later in the show, we'll revisit Sean Porter, a professional boxer with a winning story. Stay tuned, walk with us. Fantastic job. Thank you. Can you walk me through a little bit of the preparation from the emotional preparation to some of the training? Uh, the emotional prep is kind of like baked in with just like, you know, creating this, you know, developing a script and developing a movie. You kind of develop it as, you, as you're working on it. Um, and, and as far as the physical preparation, same type of thing, you know, just diet, crazy diet, working out, you know, two, three times, three, four times a day, wow. six days a week. You know, it was, it was a rigorous uh, physical. Um, transformation so we had to work really hard at it and after each project do you sit and reflect and say you know this is what I, I learned from working on Creed 2 or this project was there anything you walked away with I don't do that really maybe I should but I, I, I don't do that it's usually uh I'm usually on to the next thing after I finish wrapping a movie it's like okay what's next oh uh -huh. and then uh, I'm assuming you saw Rocky 4 there was an I iconic moment at the end when Rocky says if I can change we you, can all change yeah. right I mean that really inspired me I think it really inspired the world what does that line mean to you and do you think films like Creek can unite us especially in these times where we're so divided yeah I think that the movies like this the power of cinema really it comes into play and the fact that you know Rocky at the time I want to say he almost helped in the Cold War you know with that whole situation was was, was pretty incredible but I feel um, yeah, I feel that line is very inspiring, man. It's uh, and hopefully you know people could take away some moments from from Creed and Creed Two that that gives them that same type of feeling of uh, being able to accomplish anything and, and and really dig deep into yourselves and, and and look at yourself in the mirror. And then one of the main characters had a disability, and and, and it promotes that you know even if you have a disability or if you if you're living in fee, you should still go after your dreams. Oh, one thousand percent. I think that was like so important. You know, Bianca played by Tessa Thompson. She's such an incredible actress. Um, and very, very talented. So to be able to have a character like that, like you said, with a disability, that's able to, you know, not use that as a, as a, as a handicap or a crutch whatsoever, but, you know, uh, makes her who she is and gives her that extra drive to go out and achieve, achieve the, uh, her dreams is, is truly something special. I agree. And the last scene after the fight scene, I don't want to give it away, I think that was the most powerful scenes in the film. Can you, I mean, what does that do for you personally? Like, what was that scene for you? Was Without it like, giving it away? Without yeah, giving it away, yeah, uh, emotionally. Like, what was that? No, I think it was the first time you ever seen that place. You know, I don't think we've ever seen that. You know, um, we've all, we've always known that. You know, 
it was very, it was emotional. <laughs> you did a great job, man. You thank did. you, man. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate All it. Good, God bless, man. bro. All good, man. Thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, guys. I mean, it's a pleasure to sit with you. I mean, I've been a fan ever since uh, Rocky IV. Thank you. Florian, tell me, how did this opportunity come about? I mean, this is an iconic franchise. Yes. So you want to know how, how I did get the role? Yeah. Um, well, the offer came up to me that they, you know, were looking for a big, tall Eastern European <laughs> guy. And uh, <laughs> then I started to audition for the role. And, you know, auditioning, the audition tapes kept back and forth until they told me they like what they see. And Sly wanted to do a Skype live auditioning with me. So I had to prepare two other scenes. And then had the Skype auditioning with Sly and he liked what he saw. They flew me to LA where I met Dolph the first time and uh, Stephen Capel, the director. And after four days of working with him, rehearsing with him through all kinds of different scenes, he was like, okay, this is this our guy. guy. This is our guy. This is the guy. Yeah. And after each project, do you sit and reflect and say, you know, why did I get this opportunity? What did I learn from this? Yeah, for sure. You can't help it, especially if it's yep. if I got to re if I mm. if I got to revisit a guy I played 35 years ago when I was at 27 years old and it was my first film and it it was my breakout picture and now I'm doing it again 33 years later, and uh, you know. It's almost like the way I've aged, the character's aged in many ways. And it's, it's almost like with Stallone, he, you know, like he says, my, my best friend, you know, uh, Rocky Balboa, like he, his life is like Rocky's life. And somehow my life is kind of Ivan Drago and me and Stallone staring each other down in the ring again. It's like, it's a little bit of a surreal thing when I'm up there going, what the hell, what happened 30 <laughs> years later? And the whole thing is, it's wonderful and it's, it's, it's fantastic. They, people seem to like the movie, but oh, it is great. real for me a little bit. Obviously. And you know, in Rocky IV, there's an iconic line where he says at the end, you know, if I can change, you can change, we can all change. And that line to me really inspired me. I think it really inspired the world. What did that line mean to you? And do you think films like Creed can sort of unite us and bring us all together? For sure. Oh yeah, I think so. Well, all we can do is put that energy out there. You don't know how it's going to affect the world. You know, you can't really tell, but all you can do is try to help to put that kind of positive message out there. And, and you're right, that last line is kind of what, it almost could be the inspiration for this story because that's what does happen. It doesn't happen that easy. Everything else, like in everything else in life, it takes a while. And it's just at the end of this story that things come together mm -hmm. and people do change. And, and of course, the guy who you think never is gonna change is Ivan Drago mm -hmm. of everybody. You know, he does change too, and I think that's what's beautiful about it. Yeah, and that last scene where, where it's like your ex-wife walks out. Like, what yeah. happened to you? Is it, like, what happened to your character in that moment? <sighs> well, at that moment, I realized that um, nobody cares. It's just me. I can't trust anybody, and it's just me and my kid, and my kid's getting hurt, and, and, I, and I realized I really love him, you know. That's all that matters. I don't care about winning anymore. And I never thought I would think that mm -hmm. because Drago is the last guy who's going to give up and, and throw in the towel, ever, of anybody. So when, that, when I saw that line in the script, I was like, damn, who came up with that? That's brilliant, you know? So, yeah. yeah I it's really agree with yeah. you here, yeah. Thanks. You guys did a great job, man. Thanks. God bless. Thank, Thank you very Thanks, much. Buddy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you so much for this film. Sure. Amazing, you got a classic. I don't want to give away too much of the film, but the last five minutes, I mean, that was such a powerful you know, part of the film. What, did that, what does that mean for you personally like, when you were directing that scene? No, it means a lot. Um, five minutes in which, in which section? I'm sorry. Right towards the right. end. Towards the end, after a fight? Yes. Okay. It's nice. powerful, uh, powerful. Yeah, no, I definitely want to sum everything up. Um, and then obviously there's the, the callback to specific characters that, you know, we haven't seen in a bit. And it's what the movie was about. You know, I think, um, you know, there's a part of the film when you watch it, you're like, it can stop at the fight. You know, you're good. But then it was, the movie was so much more than just what's happening in the ring that I felt like that ending and, and what where Creed is at in his life, that felt like the perfect, like, 
Torch Pass and like what it meant about family and and redemption with last names and it's just hope all in general, you know. And so it really just connected it all. And I, I just you know writing it, I wrote it to that song obviously because it's a classic Rocky theme. And um, I just like I felt like I remember writing it with Joel and we were like just getting emotional just reading it off the page and then to have it happen on set was magical, you know what I mean? Because everybody knew what it was. It was amazing yeah. scene, yeah. Oh, thank now you. after each project, like, do you sit and reflect and say, like, you know, why did God give me this opportunity, or mm -hmm. what did I learn from this? Completely. I mean, even before, I don't even know if it's after, man. Um, like I said, like taking on this project was a huge blessing, so I, I just didn't, I just wanted to make sure it was the right move for me. You know what I mean? Um, when you do a project like this and it takes up so much time, you're putting your life aside to say I'm about to do this piece of work, and so I think one thing for me when I'm approaching projects is why am I making a project? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's just going to be a commercial piece about these two dudes sweaty, oiled up. And boxing, I don't necessarily want to do it. But when you talk to the team and they're all talking about character stuff and, and stuff that, you know, again, shows hope, determination, and inspire people, that brings me to a project. My first feature was like that as well. You know, I went back home, shot it. It was about kids that I felt like looked like me that were in my neighborhood that were struggling. And so I, I don't necessarily take too much time during the process because I'm just kind of working and in my zone. But afterwards, I think. I think it's starting to hit now yeah. after the film is because we just finished two weeks ago. So I think now is the moment where I'm like starting to realize like, wow. Wow, right? Everything's getting put and you together. Had a, I read an interview you said about failure and you said, God, it's God's way right now and just grow from that experience. Yeah, all the time. Amazing. Yeah, we were talking about just failing big just a little bit ago and um, you have to, man. You have to kind of chase it, you know, and-, and, and know How do you stay grounded objective. though during those times when things aren't going the way that you, you want it or as quickly as we want? Yeah, no, I take times by my, myself. I talk, you know, a lot to myself and, and meditate and, and um, obviously definitely prayer in that mix. And so it's huge for me. Um, I have a wife that definitely helps me during the process too. You know, she came out here, she does wardrobe, by the way, but she didn't do it for this film because she knew that the, it was going to be so like, you know, rigorous and hard work and uh, and tough and so she kind of just backed me on the moral support side and um, I don't know that was a lot it's always helped to have family around supporting you as well so that keeps you grounded um, and they're here now you know so it's like I don't yeah don't kind of fall into the hype just stay focused that's right you did a great job brother thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thanks why do it again what do you have to prove it's not about that you wouldn't be any good to anybody if you didn't do what you love. You wouldn't be able to breathe, right? Well, I wouldn't be any good to anybody if I don't handle this the right way. But I need you. I'll beat him. You better. So thank you so much. Fantastic job in the film. Can thank you tell you. me a little bit about the emotional preparation uh, and how you prepare for this role, especially during the hospital scene? Oh, yeah. You know, actually, the the big the way in for for me with Bianca is always the music, because that's sort of. Um, to me, if I can figure out that, it's the North Star, and it's also the thing that's most daunting, I think, about playing the character, because it's a space that's still new for me and, and you know, not my focus. So it kind of begins there. Um, so, so that was, you know, most of the preparation was around the music, and then this time around, you know, I, I obviously did so much work the first time in figuring out what she sounds like, what she moves like, her backstory and all that stuff, so this time around, I kind of could just show up, and, and Mike mm -hmm. and I have such an easy rapport, and we're good friends, and we've continued to remain friends in the years that have passed since we made the first film, so we really kind of picked up right where we left off. And Stephen Cable Jr. is amazing and, and, and he he was so perfect and just sort of fit right in. So so that was easy. The the stuff in the hospital um, and and all of the stuff around the baby, it's sort of in a weird, weird way life imitating art, like you can't prepare to be a parent. I couldn't have prepared for any of those moments. I think as Fantastic soon as they moment. sort of handed me the the you know, that baby that was gonna be mine. I don't know, something in me just went like, I don't, I'm not a mom, but every part of me, any part of me that's maternal 
instantly just leapt out and um especially I think, through the glass like yeah. through the glass that tear was just yeah and then also just getting to watch mike and he's so honest and so emotional in that moment so that was wonderful yeah, and i'm you. assuming you saw rocky four right and yes of course so in that film you know there's that iconic moment at the end where rocky says you know if i can change you can yeah. change what does that line mean to you and do you think films like creed has has the ability to unite us oh i think so yeah i think so i i also think that like you know I, I hope that movies in some small way have the ability to, to change us, to change our minds. I certainly think the idea of, you know, sitting in a, in a dimly lit theater and following someone's journey, and in some cases someone that doesn't look like you, is really powerful. And um, certainly in this film, to take a franchise that's so beloved over 40 years and then place Mike at the center of it suddenly, to introduce it to a whole new audience, to allow there to be representation, um, is incredible. I agree. You did a great job. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It was Thank nice meeting you. Thank you so you. much. Thank it was you. So nice to meet you, too. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back after this with Sean Porter. Today we are at St. John's University, where we will be speaking to about 900 elementary and middle school students who are, will be moving into high school. And uh, obviously that's the most pivotal time in your life where you figure out who you're going to be and where you're going to go. So. so now what organization is this today? What, what... Uh, I think we're with Gear Up. Gear Up is a part of the St. John, St. John's University. Um, gaining early awareness and readiness for undergraduate programs. So it's also team, team first? Right? Yeah, and then also team first. Team first, um, basically what they do is they have about 1,500 kids that are involved with that program, and they reach out to mostly minority uh, kids who are in, in poverty communities and just try to, you know, give them an outlet, you know. So, and, and that's what I'm here today is just to try to encourage and, and push forward with what first First, uh, first up does. Have you, when you were a kid, do you remember anyone coming to your school or speaking to you at a church that had sort of a, a motivational or a moment where it was like, oh wow, this, this really got me? Uh, I know we, I've had that before, but uh, I can't really think of one off, right offhand. I know one thing we actually used to do my, when my dad had a gym, I was 13, 14 years old, we would every Friday have a meeting, you know, a, um, you know, a, a, a meeting just discussing life and coming up with these different scenarios and how to handle them. That way we could become better men. You know, so I, I've, we've done things like this forever. Do you remember anyone that you met, say, during those events or anyone that you feel like you really inspired or touched or had like, a, like someone that maybe approached you and said, you know, that really meant a lot to me? Myself? Yeah, that you, you've met? I've gone and, I've gone and spoken to uh, detention homes in Akron, Ohio. I've had a lot of those kids get out of the, the detention home and reach out to me on Facebook mostly, letting me know that they're doing well and that you know I inspired them and, and helped them make it through those hard times and you know they're changing and then they know that it's because of me. So that's very humbling and, and, it, and it just lets me know that I'm doing my job. Do you, do you hope or do you, I mean, is, are those the intentions for today? Do you hope to reach, say, at least one person? Yes, like yes. I met, I met a few of the kids yesterday at, at the gym. There were about 20 to 30 kids that came to the gym, and I was able to get some one-on-ones with a few of those kids. Some of them, you know, you know, none of them are in trouble, but some of them, you know, little fights here and there. And when you have that opportunity to reach out and say something, I, someone took a photo, and I didn't even know they were taking a picture, but I was, I was proud of that picture because it shows me speaking to those kids and, and doing what God wants me to do. And so I was proud of myself to not only be able to, you know, perform and, and spar and stuff like that in front of those kids and then ask, answer the question that they were asking me, but also be able to touch some of them and hopefully affect them in a positive way. And the thing about you too, it's like, it's not that you're just performing, like when you see the kids, they got to turn on that yeah. quarter. Yeah. It's really you. This yeah. is what you live. And this is who you are as a person. This is who I am as a person. I think that really helps. You know, I, I told you that um, before we started this that I have about two different ways I want to try to approach this. I don't know which way I'm going to approach it yet. I'll have to fill it out, and then and then my heart will, uh, uh, will lead me, and, and the rest will follow. So it's very easy for me to get into whatever kind of mode I have to be in to really reach these kids. So I'm I'm pretty confident that 
we'll do some good things today. So do you, do you say a prayer or anything that you ask God before these these sort of uh, engagements? I started, I just started doing that. I uh, I recently did two, um, two uh, broadcasts on, on, for boxing on TV. And after, I didn't do it for the first one. The first one actually, I, I prayed in my room just that everything would go well. And then the second one, I was right there, right before we went on air, I, I said a quick prayer to myself. And that's something that I want to do. I want to pray that God leads me and, and I, I don't say the things that I want to say, but he, he actually works through me. And, and, and that's what I pray for when I go into a, a fight. So I know that, you know, he does that in a fight. He'll definitely do that right here on the podium for me. And now the last question is now, you're leaving today to go where? Tell me your plan now. Uh, we've been in New York for a week. We, we've gotten in some, some pretty good training as well as being able to you know, have some fun with the media and come here and do this today. This is basically the icing on the cake for us. This is that moment where we get to um, culminate everything we've done this week and, and reach these kids, which is my dad knows is my number one goal, not just to be a champion, but to make these kids champions. You know? So I'm gonna speak on that today. After that, we'll be headed back to Las Vegas. We'll continue training and we'll be building up. Thank you as always. God bless. Good Thank you very today. much. Being an athlete, I mean, like I was mentioning earlier, like you don't really see a lot of athletes. First, first thing they do, especially you, is mention their faith and talk about how if it wasn't for God. Like before thanking anyone, they go, "I want to thank God." Like, and I find that I, I think that's really it's, it's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. And do you see that a lot in sports? It's important to me to do that. I think that that's uh, a big reason why I do what I do. It's not just to win, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but to actually glorify God and you know, my Creator and, and let everyone know that you know, hey, if you believe too, good things could happen to you as well. Blessings are uh, out here for you you just have to have faith and go get them i see a lot of a lot a, a number of other athletes do it um actually uh the uh the point guard for golden state warriors um he just did a tweet about you know how just because you pray doesn't mean you're gonna win it just means that that's what you have to do because you are a christian you know so i, I appreciate it seeing that and I hold that with me now. Let's say, you know, you're, you're fighting an opponent that's Catholic, Christian, or he believes in some sort of high you know, God, and you're both praying for the same thing. What do you think God does? If you're paying, praying <laughs> to win, and he's praying to win, what do you, how do you think God answers that prayer? God has a plan for us all. I, I understand that. I understand that there's a reason why we win and we lose, you know. I lost before, and it, I think I grew in my faith from losing. You know, I actually had a draw, and I, I know I grew a lot from that draw because I knew that there were there were certain things that I had to rely on. I had to rely on God after not get, receiving the victory. I had to rely on God and pray more and, and, and know that, you know, cherish every moment in and out of the ring, and, and, and you know, uh, blessings will, will, will still be there for me. Uh, do you, during training or before training, do you see yourself praying more, or is there a, is it it's a constant, or is there a certain, a certain time where you feel like, you know, I need to really pray more? When do you see yourself praying? It always comes on uh, more and more the more I go through camp, and as I approach the end of camp into the fight, it comes on a lot more. And honestly, when I, after the fight, I'm, I'm always praying that I can remain in that level, at that level of faith. But, Oh yeah, I, I've started some new, new rituals of my own. Uh, I do track workouts twice a week. Before those track workouts began, I jog down about 50 meters. I say a pray. I pray for the day, pray for the workout, and pray that I stay healthy through the workout. And then I just jog on back and, and begin to work. We, my dad and I, we pray every time before we spar, and uh, sometimes we pray afterwards. If there, if there's a hard day, there's been days if it's really hard, and we say, hey, man, let's pray with us. Um, depends. Oh, uh, we always pray for uh, safety. We always pray that we learn and we have a good day. Uh, pretty much that's about it. I think that, that, for me, that covers it all. And my dad actually leads the prayer every time um, before we fight, before we, we train as well. He leads the prayer. I, uh, I think that keeps us strong together. I, I like that about him. He, you know, he doesn't say, hey, pray, pray real quick or anything like that. He knows that that's his job in that moment is to really help us come together on a spiritual level and uh, that's what he does and he always prays that we have a good day that we learn and that both uh, my
myself and my sparring partners are safe. Did you ever pray for opponents? Oh, oh yeah, have to. I have to pray for the opponent. I, I pray all the way around because uh, as much as I can hurt them, they can hurt me. You know, so I, I pray for their uh, their health as well, uh, in and out of the ring. So we we pray before we fight and after we fight. That's important. We, we pray uh, that there's a that that we get victory, but you know. And the chance that we don't get big, we understand that you know I can't take that on God. What do you think the ultimate goal is for God? What do you think? What's your what's your ultimate plan? What's God have in store? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I spoke to you earlier about you know how the, the stage is getting bigger and the bigger the stage gets, it feels to me like God's stage gets bigger. That I get more interviews about my faith. That people um, are more interested in my my spiritual setting and you know how I want to grow and. And what I believe in and things of that nature. So I feel like, you know, as high as I go is as high as I can lift him up, which is all I want to do. And I mean, when, when you're on stage and when you're able to speak about your faith, what do you think the result is? Like, do you picture like this kid at home or this young lady at home? Like, what do you what do you think? Do you feel uh, like you're reaching someone? Yeah. Well, you know what? I did an interview one time, and a few of my church brothers I saw it, and they started texting me about it. And as soon as they text me. I said, oh, no, I didn't mention God. And I was, you know, I felt kind of down about myself. I said, I said, oh, man, I, I didn't even mention God. And they, they texted me back to me, like, don't worry about it. We, You you were shining. We still, You could see God in you even though you didn't say it. So as long as, um, you know, that little kid or that little, that little boy or that little girl or that, that young man or whoever's watching me, as long as they know that it's not just me, but it's, it's also God helping and orchestrating and, 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 and leading me. I feel like my job is being done. Would you like to see more prayer in sports or just? Of course I would. Yourself? Yeah, of course I would. So I love okay. watching the NFL. And the, the NFL is, I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, the teams, they, the Browns, I went to a Browns game and it was cool to see the guys come out on the field. As they, they came out on one side, they jogged all the way to the goal line of the other side and they all kneeled down. It wasn't all the entire team, but it was a, a lot of the, a lot of the players. They knelt down and they prayed for a little bit or whatever, and then they got up and they jogged to the sideline. I just thought that that was awesome. I, I, I feel like that that's something that I saw growing up and it's what has kind of led me to do what I do, and I think that that's what we're supposed to do as athletes. We're not just you know athletes to entertain, but we're also here to uh, spread the word and, and inspire. I mean, I, I wear this cross. I'm not a, fla a flashy guy at all, but people notice this cross. Yes, and um, so, right yeah, I have a, a buddy who says, man, uh, this guy's wearing a whole lot of gold, and all you have on is what matters the cross. I say, yeah, and that's all you've seen me, ever seen me wearing, because this is this means more to me than anything else. I appreciate it. Thank you for your honesty, and I appreciate it. Thank you, got you so it. much. Thank you. Do you have any positive words to say to your fans? God bless everybody out there. Love you. I uh, love you for, for all your support, and uh, we'll see you soon. Like always, thank you for walking with us. Stay tuned till next week, and always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. Thank you. Tell me when. Still the frame, I feel happy. Still the frame. Still the frame. Tessa Thompson. We love you, Tessa. Oh, wait, that recording? Cut that.